Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So it's Saturday, I'm at home with my kids and the power company just turned the power off on us. Um, so I actually set up one of my video lights here at the table um, and I really felt like the Lord was wanting me to film this right now. Um, it's something he began to speak to me about last night and that is the simple truth, and this is a biblical truth, that God accepts you no matter who you are and no matter what you've done. And if you don't believe that when you hear it, um, I'm, I'm going to show you this in Scripture, okay? This is from uh, Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 13, okay? It says, when you were dead in your transgressions, that's sin, right? When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him. It's saying while you were still there, he brought you over here, okay? And then it says, having forgiven us all our transgressions. Did y'all get that? Okay, before I read this next part, um, the Lord gave me this picture of when I was in school, we used to have this mark system where if you did something wrong in class, you, you spoke back to the teacher, you, you know, were talking in class or whatever, they would put a mark up on the board. And, they, and every time you did something bad, they would add another mark to the board. And eventually, you would get a detention, and if you got enough marks, you would get sent to the office, you know, and every detention you got went on your record, and if you got enough detentions, you got suspended, or, you know, it just kept piling up. But, but here's the point. They kept a record of wrongs, right? And you, you probably, if you were in school at one point, you probably experienced something like that. There was a record of wrongs, and you might have experienced that in your house. You might have experienced that at church, y'all. I really feel like the Holy Spirit has wanted me to share this, that there is a record of wrongs, an eternal record of wrongs. There, there is a spiritual record of wrongs. God has a list of everything that you've ever done wrong, everything I've ever done wrong, but this is the amazing news. I'm gonna keep reading. I want you to listen to this. This is verse 14. It says, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, I want y'all to see how he canceled it out. Which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. What this verse is saying is that when Jesus died on the cross, when he hung there, what God did, the Bible says that Jesus became sin for us. Whose sin did he become? He became our sin. And God nailed our sin to the cross. He, he took everything you've ever done and he put it in a list. And that list became essentially the body of Jesus Christ and he nailed it to the cross. And that's why, that is why God is able to accept you no matter what you've done. Because he's already paid the price for the, whatever it is that you've done, whatever you're thinking about right now. He's already paid the price for it at the cross. That's what Jesus did for us. That's the good news. And, and, here, and I know some people might say, well, does that mean that you know, everybody gets to be saved? And man, that would be amazing. But the truth is, no. The answer is no. Because even though God accepts us no matter what we've done, not every person chooses to accept him. You know, you can only receive the benefits of a gift. Oh my gosh, there goes the power. It's back on. You can only receive the benefits of a gift if you're willing to accept that gift. And this is what's so cool. I, I really believe this is why God wanted me to film this right now. And I did not know the power was about to come back on. But because I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, the uh, earlier in Colossians. This is so amazing. When we, here's the thing. God paid the price for our sins. But when we accept that, when we choose to accept that, this is what, what happens. Verse 13 of chapter 1. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So we are moved from one kingdom to another, the domain of darkness to the domain of light, God's kingdom. And, and this is what's so cool, you know, about, uh, about Jesus coming to earth is the Bible says that through Jesus, grace and truth were revealed. So as much as, and I know this happens in the church nowadays, especially in the culture, you know, when we talk about Christianity, um, my kids are all like walking around and like watching me and stuff. 
Um, okay. Uh, so uh, they're trying to get my attention. I will be done in a second, okay? I'll be done in a second, and we can, like, play a video game or something or a board game. Okay, y'all? Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I think in the culture, we're infatuated with the idea of grace. Um, <laughs> y'all go play in your room for a sec, okay? I'm almost done. We're infatuated with the idea of, of his grace, but we're not willing to accept his truth. And here's the thing. If, if you accept part of who God is, but you're not willing to accept all of who he is, you, you're not really accepting him. And this is what I believe some of us have missed. As man, we've heard about the love and the grace of God, and we want that so bad, but we're not willing to accept his truth. And here's the good news as well. Accepting his truth, I believe if you've heard that before, you know, and maybe someone has like beat you over the head with the Bible before or something like that, accepting God's truth does not mean trying to live up to a standard of rules, trying to take oh, all these rules and like abide by them. When you move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light by accepting Jesus Christ fully for who he is, when you realize how desperately you need that, that's how you accept that gift. It's not accepting a list of rules, but the good news is when you say, God, my way is, is hurting me. My way ultimately leads to death, and I don't want to live this way anymore. I want, I want to do things your way. When we do that and we accept what Jesus did for us on the cross, Jesus comes to live inside of us. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and he is the one who actually begins to change us. So it's not a burden on our shoulders to try to fix ourselves. That's not what Christianity is about. That's not what Jesus is about. It's a savior who has come to save us. Not come to put something on top of us to try to live out. This is good news, y'all. This is good news. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to just go ahead and end this video, but, but I, I do feel like I want to pray with you real fast. If you, if you know that you're in one of these two places, m number one, that you feel like, man, you know what? I've been wanting to accept God's grace, but I've never been willing to accept his truth. I've never admitted how desperately I need Jesus for who he really is. I want you to pray with me. That, and, and ask God to give you the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is not a bad thing, y'all. It's a good thing. It's something that, that changes our hearts and makes us realize how, how amazing God is. And it makes us in awe of God and his wonders. But it also helps us to fully accept him for who he is. And it helps us to be in a position where we're willing to change when God begins to work on our hearts in a loving way. God is a loving father. And he is not, you know, he, he does not beat his children down like you know, maybe you've experienced in life before. He loves you. And he wants to lovingly lead you into a, a, a path of light, from a path of darkness to a path of light. Maybe you're in that other camp where you've, you've heard of the truth of God, you've heard of the ways of God, and you've tried to live those ways out, but it has been so heavy on your shoulders and you know you can't do it. And maybe you've failed. And I was in this place before, and I've been in this place before. You need to understand that God is the one, it's his grace that is doing the work. It's not you. Jesus did it. Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. He did all of it. So I'm going to pray and I just, I hope you pray with me. Um, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would reveal your truth to me right now, but you would also reveal your grace. I ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to introduce me to you fully, that, that I would not be trying to live this life on my own, that I would not be trying to make this work on my own but that I would be fully accepting the love of God that you showed me on the cross, the grace of God that you poured out for me at the cross, that I'd be willing to accept whatever it is you have for me, Lord, whatever you wanna do in my heart and my life, in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed with me today, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to be able to pray for you. I love y'all so much, and I'll see you next time.